Hi, everybody. It's Andre from the Eaglesoft Field Guide, and I'm here with one of the fielders. Ani, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, Andre. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, and I'm so glad we got a chance to do this today. Uh, this, you know, the you're in Massachusetts. Right. And you're, are you, are you working yet? Are the office open yet? Uh, what's the status? No, the office is closed. Uh, and we have two reasons. First of all, because of the virus. And another reason is that we are going through renovation. Okay. But we're planning to open in two weeks. And let's see, because the phase one for us opening is the only emergencies. And from phase two, we can do a regular cleanings and uh, elective procedures. So yes, this is our plan. For yeah. now, we're closed. So, and I'm in Pennsylvania, and it's pretty much the same situation where we haven't gotten to the point where we're opening yet. But yeah, we're in the Northeast, which is, it's going to take a little bit more time than some of the other rest of the country that, that we've been talking to. So what we're going to talk about today is the schedule. And we're going to talk about, you know, how we better utilize the schedule. And this, you know, as bad as this virus is, it also gives us an opportunity to, to refocus on some of the basics of the practice. So, you know, we're, you know, um, I'm going to actually share out my screen. I'm going to give me a second sure. to share that. And now, can you see my Eaglesoft schedule? Yes, cool. I can. Okay. So really what we're going to do is go through the process of looking at our schedule and figuring out some of the, the, the things that we utilize the schedule for. Now, how many doctors are in your, in your, your office? One doctor and two hygienists. One doctor, two hygienists. Okay, good. And, you know, uh, what I typically do is I set up each of the columns in my office, in, in my Eaglesoft for each provider. So if, even if I have one doctor, if they have two chairs, they'll, they'll have two columns. Um, mm -hmm. In this situation, I would have like a restore one gray and then restore two gray. So each doctor would have columns for where they work out of. And then I did the same thing for each hygienist has a chair that they work out of or a column that they work out of. Um, Eaglesoft calls them chairs. I always call them columns. It's easier to mm -hmm. remember that way. So um, tell me some of the things that you struggle with or some of the things that you like or, or don't like about the schedule. We can kind of talk about that and, and how these, these things work. Yeah, we are not using yet the blocking, mm -hmm. but I want to start to use it when we will reopen. So this is very interesting part of scheduling mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and the way that I block my schedule is because I, I, I know six months from now how my hygiene department is going to be scheduled. So I pre-block hygiene more than I worry about the doctor's schedule. So okay. if you can look at my schedule, you can see that I have my scheduling and uh, my scaling and replanning. And then this is perio maintenance. I can tell from my colors, the darker the pink, yeah. the more working on gums. Mm -hmm. So this is SRP and perio maintenance. Mm -hmm. Then I have a new patient. I have a recall visit. And then I have a short mm -hmm. recall visit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. th that's how I kind of block my schedule. And I, we can talk about how we set these things up. But um, I pre-block my schedule that way. And in my restorative room, I just schedule, a, I put my block in as restorative, just a generic mm -hmm. restorative kind of procedures. I have a lot of offices that tell me, you know, I, you know, I only like to do my heavy procedures in the morning and I don't do mm -hmm. endo in the afternoon. So, you know. I would set that up based on those things. But the beauty of at least having a block in the, the doctor's schedule for some sort of restorative care is, I'm, I know we're closed here, but let me just show you. If I scheduled my doctor at one o'clock, mm -hmm. one thing that happens, is it defaults to the most common procedure, which is a recall. Mm -hmm. So if you don't put some sort of block or some sort of appointment type in there, it, anytime you schedule the doctor, it's going to default to a hygiene appointment. Mm -hmm. So even if like for me, I just schedule a generic restorative, it always defaults to a doctor appointment in that setup. Oh, I see. So if it is blocked, it, uh, the appointment type will be depending on the type of the block, right? Exactly. Exactly. Oh. And because, and I'll show you, I'm going to go over here to my front office and go to list on schedule and appointment types. The way I set my appointment types up is I put a D in front of all my doctor appointment types and I put an H in front of my hygiene appointment types. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that is, and I'm going to go switch back over to my schedule. When I go to schedule a doctor appointment, and I'm just going to grab any, appoint, any patient who I can find. 
If I hit the drop down now, the choices of appointment types, you see how all of my doctor appointments are grouped together and then my hygiene mm -hmm. appointments are down here. So I don't have endo up here and then restorative here. And then in the middle of that, I have profi. I see. So I, I make sure I, that I, I actually name these things so they're, they're in order. And now you can see I have this as medium. So if I grab that, I have my low and high right around mm -hmm. it. And all my doctor appointments kind of show in the same window. So I'm not doing a whole lot of searching looking for, okay, was it endo up here and then profi down here and mm -hmm. extraction. So they're all grouped together and it makes it so much easier for me to find them and utilize them. Quick question. What is the difference on your schedule in restoratives like high, medium, and low? It's Great question. Like, so let me go back over here to my appointment types and you can see light, medium, dark in my restorative. Uh -huh. So the low for me is basically a 30 minute appointment. Okay. So I go 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. I see. Okay. Or whatever you guys did. So if you, if I said to you, how long does it take to do one filling? And you said, oh, we mm -hmm. schedule about a half hour. Okay. How mm -hmm. long does it take you to do a crown prep? Oh, about an hour. Okay. How long does it take you to do a bridge prep? Oh, we schedule 90 minutes. Okay. Well, you've set up your low, medium and high. Oh, so you have bridge included in the restoratives. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. And the reason I do that is because see, this, restorative high appointment. Now imagine this is a bridge prep and it's 120 mm -hmm. minutes. But if I said during this bridge prep, you know, we're going to do 18, 19, 20, but at the same uh -huh. time, 21 needs a filling. So instead of having this filling appointment type and bridge appointment type and root canal, well, no, root canal have separate, but instead of having all these kinds of things, uh, you wouldn't schedule up inlay, onlay, bridge, yeah. crown, single crown, multiple crown build up. I just have them by time, low, medium, and high. And that That's way good. I can schedule multiple things in that appointment type and it won't really matter. So let me go back over here. So that if I schedule that as a high appointment type mm -hmm. and I schedule a crown, crown, but I also put a build up. Oh, sorry, I got to put a cute number in there. I've got to do a build up D2950 build up on that tooth on well, number one but i could also do a filling d239 i could do a one surface filling on there on number two and now it doesn't matter that i have all three different types of procedures because it's still going to be green it's still going to be restorative and on my schedule the beauty of that is i don't want to prescribe i can see the procedures listed yes. there. So I don't mm -hmm. need a different color for the different kinds of procedures. It's just that simple. It makes it easier for me to kind of figure out how to schedule. Yeah, that's good. I will definitely use this method. Yep. And, and for me, the, it, the easiest thing is it keeps down the, the, the number of colors and the number of choices because I don't want to have to scroll through here finding all kinds of scenarios. I don't need a bridge mm -hmm. with a crown and a crown with a filling. I, it's really simple it's just by time that's uh, good what's mm -hmm. most important is to be able to see you know something like endo where i want to say okay during you know, during an endo procedure my doctor doesn't want to have you know any recall scheduled next to it and you know this mm -hmm. you know? and so everybody mm -hmm. knows ani is a is a dentist so she knows these procedures so when i'm when i'm scheduling endo i don't want you know to see um a kid's appointment next to it you know, mm -hmm. sure, so I want to yeah. see, so my endo appointments are going to be orange so that I know. So if in this procedure, if there was, you know, if we had to do a root canal at the same time, we're doing a, a crown prep. I mean, I know that's mm -hmm. not a normal thing. That's going to be <laughs> orange in my world. Uh -huh. So that I, when I see that appointment, I know don't schedule anything next to it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. So, cool. so that's how I, I utilize my colors and I'm going to go to this day where I actually have people scheduled. So now just, and I'm gonna to go to a view where there's absolutely no names or anything else. So if you mm -hmm. look at my schedule, um, and I was in the last webinar I did, I was talking about, I actually use this, I have a, a huge office and they have 26 operatories. Wow. And we have um, a 70 inch TV monitor in the hallway uh -huh. and patients walk by that all day long and this is what they see but they can't see what patients are scheduled. 
but the uh -huh. doctors and assistants know exactly what procedures are scheduled and they can tell yeah. what's happening and when the doctors need to come in the room and they can tell by the IntelliCare what's going on with a lot of these patients. Mm -hmm. Plus, immediately, we know that there's an emergency patient coming in at 1.30. Mm -hmm. That's you know, right. We know that there's some sort of bridge prep or some sort of big restorative procedures. And then these little light procedures here are easy. And then right here, my light yellow lets me know that there's kids coming in. So during that mm -hmm. afternoon, it's a whole lot of kids coming in. Yep. <laughs> so it's so much easier for me to see the procedures just by color. And uh -huh. if I need to see the, the providers who are doing it, I can switch up here from the A to P. And now I can see which providers are doing those things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always say this is kind of my view, like at the airport, you know, yeah. this is where the planes are going. This is, mm -hmm. you know, what, what gate you have to be at, you know? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, views, I'll go back to my full view so we can see here. So that's, you know, and again, that's why I, I do set up my um, colors and I just set this up in the last um, webinar I did. You can see here, this is kind of set up in the traditional consultant way of doing either meat and potatoes or rocks and pebbles. So this is like, I want to do a crown here and I want to do a crown mm -hmm. here and I want to do some light procedures here. So you can set these uh, templates up any way you want based on the, the, the needs of the practice, the way you guys do things. I got it. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Because I have a huge list of types of appointments. <laughs> yeah. Now I will decrease it. Yeah. And I have copies, like I have duplicates because we merged two offices and I cannot inactivate them. So it's a huge list. <laughs> yeah. So what I always suggest, if you've got a, a long list, in the same way mm -hmm. I use my D's and X's, if you had yes. something in here and, you know, ha imagine you have a duplicate of a recall. I put mm -hmm. an X, I'll rename it X, old recall. All right. Mm -hmm. And that way, if nothing else, it puts it to the bottom of the list. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I will do it absolutely. Yeah. No easy way. And I do have my um, appointment types in the field guide. The only thing that I don't have in my demo, which I should start adding here, is I don't have one on here for oral surgery, which for my extractions, I should have that. Mm -hmm. But I utilize the same color as my scaling to be my oral surgery color. Oh, I saw it's the same color. Okay. Same color. Yeah. So if I saw that same, you know, dark pink, I'd be thinking, you know, it's, it's surgery on my, on my doctor's column. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It will not be perioscaling on doctor's side. Okay. Yeah. So what okay. else can you think of? What other questions can you? Yeah. I have one quick question. How to move from schedule a screen to a clinician screen Okay. without typing in the, yeah, because right now everybody in the back office is using the schedule screen. Yep. And I want them to train to use the screen that they have to use. Yep. I get this all the time because I'm always talking about, you know, people should be using this clinical screen. Yeah. For, for, okay. And I'll show you. It, it's kind of tricky, but there's a couple mm -hmm. things that you kind of have to do to kind of set things up ahead of time. Okay. For one, um, can you see my toolbar at the very bottom of my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. On the toolbar, you have to right click and you have to go mm -hmm. to your um, taskbar settings. Uh-huh. All right. Hopefully this will pop up in the screen. Good. Okay. On the taskbar setting, you have to make uh -huh. sure that you say here where it says combine taskbar buttons, you want to make sure uh -huh. it says never combine them. Okay. Now, what that does is it lays out all of my icons here on the bottom instead of stacking them. So you kind of mm -hmm. can't see what's there. So now I can see they're all open at the bottom. So I can see my schedule. And I can mm -hmm. see Eagles off. I can quickly yeah. switch back and forth between the two. Okay. So let's open up Charles's chart. So I would work from Charles's chart. I do everything mm -hmm. I need to do in this chart. All right. And then I'm going to save it and I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to go back to my schedule and I was mm -hmm. working on Charles. I'm going to go mm -hmm. to Tim. Okay. Don't do anything other than open up Tim's chart and watch it magically change. Oh, I see. So oh, then this... I would work on my next patient, do everything I need to do here, everything I need uh -huh. to do here, hit save, don't close this chart, go back to your schedule, uh -huh. grab your next patient and hit chart. Okay. And magically it flips to the next patient. Yeah. 
So the chart must be always on the screen. Like you do not close it. Right. Yeah. Cause okay, if I close just... this uh -huh. and I go back to my schedule, I choose the next patient. I go to chart. It puts the chart on top of the schedule. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you kind of have to move it over here, open uh -huh. up the chart and then go back to your schedule. Grab your next patient. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, because the reason they're always telling me in the back office, oh, we are so lazy to type in the last name of the patient, and you know the last names are tricky yep. and it back and forth. So yeah, now I they will not have reason to tell me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so you know, I, I see so many people. They say, well, I can't, uh, I can't get from this screen to uh -huh. my schedule. And they don't realize uh -huh. that there's a, and mine has been modified, but there's a clock on the wall right here. Uh huh. And that clock is your schedule. Okay. So and it's, it's, it's weird because the, the, the schedule on the front desk uh, is here and there's a clock on the wall there for the time clock. Yeah. Uh huh. And the operatory, the clock is the schedule. So it's kind of, oh. kind of weird, but just so everybody oh. knows that. You know, if you click on the clock on the wall, mine's a little different, but if you click on the clock, then it will take you uh -huh. to the schedule. But so it's two okay. kind of two separate pieces. All right. I see. And then the other reason people don't want to work from this screen is they say, well, I have to use my, the, the time clock. So mm -hmm. I always put the time clock on my toolbar here. Mm -hmm. So that the time clock is here. So there's no reason for the back office to be on the front desk. If the two things they are using is the schedule and the time clock. Got it. Got, it. Got yeah. it. So it's a little it's a little weird to to do it that way, but if you start, you know, utilizing, like I said, if you open up the chart and then use it from the schedule that way, it'll mm -hmm. it'll solve a whole lot of issues. But the beauty of that is now I can see all of my IntelliCare icons yes. down here. I can see the patient who I'm working on. Um, you know, if there were medical alerts, I could see those, but everything works from this screen. Got it. Good question. What else can you think of? About schedule, bring me back to schedule. You can ask anything. Yeah. You've got me asking <laughs> anything. Um, let me see. I haven't been in office for, I, I like, I haven't worked for two months. So I I'm kind of. <laughs> Everybody's going to be, it's going to be like shocking to go back and, and uh, working in offices and having to deal with, and patients are going to have new concerns and different concerns. And, you know, it's going to be a whole different world. Yeah. So we, what we are doing, we're using blocks on the schedule, like the grace one. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like it. But what are these, for example, what we are using them, like for making a notes. Mm -hmm. Like we are putting it next to the patient's appointment. For example, if I calculated a copay, so okay. I'm putting in the book. Is there any kind of alternative? Like because the schedule looks ugly. Sure, and I, 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 I'm that way. I don't like doing that kind of stuff. So what I would do is, if I'm calculating copayments, I'm putting those mm -hmm. in the patient notes here. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put my copays there. Or depending on the office, I've actually had some offices who will write it right in the prefix field. Oh, okay. Four dollars. So uh -huh. This person, and as long as it's not more than three digits, you know. But yeah. <laughs> if they're gonna owe me, if they're gonna owe me more than that, I'm gonna put dollar, <laughs> like five k, uh -huh. so for five thousand dollars. But if it's less than three digits, so they're gonna they're gonna owe me two hundred fifty four dollars. Okay. And, and then, then that shows up right there in front of their name. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because we have like columns between the doctor and the hygienist. Like we have between each uh, chair, like mm -hmm. a free column where we put these uh, blocks and yeah, it's ugly. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other problem is if you move the patient, you've got to move that block and then, you know, sure. it's <laughs> yeah. I use blocks and I'll show you, I was, I was actually just talking about this in the last video I did. So this is kind of how I utilize blocks. So imagine, uh -huh. you know, like at the beginning of the year, we get the calendar for where the local schools are going to be closed. 
Mm -hmm. And typically on those days, you know, moms are always asking if you get an available appointment, you know, can I bring the kids in or school teachers are saying, you know, I'm off that day. Can you, can I get in mm -hmm. veterans day? You know, those kind of days. So I always put a block on my holidays to let me know mm -hmm. that they're going to be closed. But then inside that block, I write sort of a, a, a quick call list. So even uh -huh. though I might use oh. quick fill, I would uh -huh. put a list here of people who are looking for appointments. Mm -hmm. So that's how I better, I mean, I utilize the blocks to do that. Or even if I had, um, you know, imagine we have a lunch and learn. I put like, uh, lunch and learn with 3M. And mm -hmm. then the sales rep, sales rep, Becky, and then her phone number. And if she gave us a credit card so we could pick up pizzas. Mm -hmm. right. So the beauty of that is, you know, I can see that we have a lunch and learn, but the private mm -hmm. information, I only see if I rest my mouse or if I double click on it. Yeah, yeah. I got it. So. Uh, I have another question, like it's popped up now for me. Um, so if for some reason, the same person, one person has two accounts, mm -hmm. how do I merge these accounts? Because I will tell you a short story. Uh, I had a patient who was uh, 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 like she had accounts in our both offices. So when we merged these offices, she had two accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made this IntelliCares. I started to use IntelliCares. So her uh, FMX was not showing, uh, it was showing that she is not required, like there was not an IntelliCare for FMX because she has done it in another office, which Under was all, also, uh, yeah. So yeah. how we merge not only the account, the whole information. Okay, so for one, you're not gonna be able to, um, what I would do mm -hmm. is I would actually go into the FMX on the non-active account, you know, the, the one from the other office. Uh -huh. And I would actually transfer her FMX. Okay. Into the good account, you know, the, the active account. So yeah. if you transfer that into the good account, you can also down here say update the last FMX. Oh, so it will update it in a walking out system? Like exactly. It'll show for the the current patient, the, the one in the new in your current mm -hmm. office. It, so I would transfer it into the the good person and then I would go into that person and update the patient's last FMX so that it shows, you know, down at the bottom of the chart where the last FMX was taken. Mm-hmm. So I do two things, transfer it, and then I would go in here. Okay. I would pretty much transfer all images from the old account into the new account. All right. Now, quick question. The old office was using, uh, oh, what is the name? The Not the EagleSoft imaging. Uh, like Dexas imaging or? Yes, okay. yes. But so the images don't show up in EagleSoft like that? No. Okay, so if that's the case, then the next, way to do that is and it's something I do for all of my new patients so imagine mm -hmm. you came to my office and mm -hmm. you said um, I'm bringing a, a, a thumb drive with x-rays from my old office great okay. so what I would do is I'd go into your account all right and I would actually go into my walkout during my first visit so uh -huh. I came in for the first visit and I put in an exam and x-rays and all that stuff that we took today mm-hmm I would actually add another item, A0210. So see what it mm -hmm. says, imaging transferred from another provider. Uh huh. I would edit that service and I would go here and I would change the date of service to the date of that x-ray. So imagine you had that x-ray taken back in oh. 2019 or 2018. I see. 2018. Oh. All right. And apply uh -huh. that. And what's going to happen is it's going to show that the last FMX you had mm -hmm. was on, was in 2018. I see. Oh, so I actually okay. post a line item in your account for an, an x-ray or FMX transferred from another provider. Mm -hmm. And it updates the date of the last FMX mm -hmm. in the account screen. So up here the, would be that 2018 date. Mm -hmm. 
So I actually have a code. I'm going to clear this out so you can. It's see admin it. code, right? Admin code. Yep. Admin code. Yes. My next question was about admin codes. How you create them? Because the only one I have, which was created before I came to the office, is the follow up. Okay. And then in description, I put whatever was done. Like for example, try in or crown delivery or yep. whatever. Yes. So. How yeah, so I have I have admin codes for everything, and mm -hmm. the way I you can see here, I have codes set up very specifically for my impressions, for my wax up, for my try in, for my deliveries. So I have mm -hmm. so that every stage shows up as a line item. All right, mm -hmm. very specifically. Um, I don't want a generic one. I want one that's very specific to what I'm doing, because mm -hmm. that way, um, I I'll show you how quick and easy it is for me to write a treatment plan. So let's do a treatment plan for a patient. And let's say this patient, I'm gonna do a new exam for a denture. Mm -hmm. This patient is gonna get a full denture and I want to write a treatment plan for this patient. So based on those admin codes, I can put in period, D-E-N-T for denture, mm -hmm. treatment plan is done. Oh my gosh. And that includes all of those admin codes. So there's my upper uh -huh. denture, lower denture, the vertical dimension, a wax up, a try in, a delivery, and then all of my post insertion uh -huh. adjustments. And if it is only upper denture, I will just remove the lower one, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay. And why did you put the dot before you wrote the denture? Because that way, when I, when, anytime I look at my list of procedure codes, uh -huh. it always puts all of my exploding codes at the top of the list because oh, okay. alphabetically the dot puts it at the top of the list. And because I know that I want my exploding codes to be the first things on my list because they're the most commonly done procedures. Okay. And w two more questions. So sure. uh, admin codes are how you put the code. Like what number do you choose? Like okay. it's A, I got it you that it's A in the beginning. Yep. And it means admin, but then what are what about the numbers? Okay, so I like for my denture codes, and I'll show you from uh -huh. the list, my denture codes are always gonna be, and I always start from the end. So my deliveries or insertions are always 998. So a crown oh. is 2998, a bridge is 6998, a denture is 5998. A, follow, okay. a, a final perio visit would be a 4998, all right? So I always set it up that way and then I work backwards from there. So if you said, we only have three steps when we do a denture. So it would be uh -huh. 998, 997, 996. Okay. Wax up, try and delivery. And okay. that way I always have them set up the same way. So in every office I go in, I can tell you a 6998 is always gonna be a delivery of a, of a bridge. Right? Mm-hmm. So that way it makes it so much easier for, and you know, I have partial and full dentures being on the same code, but it makes it so much easier. And I create, I just kind of made up this uh, impression secondary and impression hydro, because we uh -huh. all know sometimes it takes multiple times to do yeah, sure. in or wax up or those. So I added extra steps so that when I write a treatment plan for a denture, I mm -hmm. add a couple extra visits so that if we don't need them, we sound like mm -hmm. heroes. You know, yeah, I can say what yeah. patient it was, we were expecting it to take six steps, but we got it done in five. It's so much nicer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and what is, the, for admin, admin codes, what is the ADA code? So I always use, because this is a denture code, I always use the uh -huh. miscellaneous denture code. Miscellaneous. So five, D5999, you know, uh -huh. bridge 6999. So I always use uh -huh. the generic ADA code, but because it's never submitted to insurance, it really yes. doesn't matter for these. Uh -huh. but, but I always use the, the generic 999. Well, we're going through this new thing with the one uh, D1999 for um, the PPE. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing the same thing. I have an admin code for my PPE, and then my ADA code is the correct D1999. So, but I always set them mm -hmm. up all this way. The other, the other great thing that I can do, and it's you know, for some of my bigger offices, under activities, if I go to practice management and money finder, uh -huh. I could do, in theory, I could say, show mm -hmm. me everybody who had a D2750, because we know those mm -hmm. PFMs are going to be lab made, all right? Mm -hmm. And they lack a completed D2998. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, that shouldn't be right. Yeah, that's right. D two nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can say, show me everybody who we did a also. I mean, a, a PFM, but we never inserted it. Mm -hmm. So you can utilize this for pretty much anything. Show me everybody we did a, a you know made a, a a denture for, but we never delivered it. Yeah. So using Money Finder and the admin codes, you can, can you know do a bunch of things. I have a code for my post scaling appointments. So I can show, oh. show me everybody who we did scaling on, Ooh, but they never came back in for follow-up. For, for follow-up, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the beauty of that. And then I can have my hygienist, if they had downtime, you know, make some phone calls and say, hey, here's mm -hmm. all your perio patients who just never, who kind of fell through the cracks. Yeah. Oh my God. Eagle Self is like endless. There are so many things that you can use and i am like a self-educated i never had any training all the trainings is your videos and webinars <laughs> yeah. now every time i go to I'm like andre said so and my dog like, who is andre said, oh you don't know who is andre <laughs> Well, you know, and this is this is how I learned EagleSoft, you know, and yeah. thank God that we have really good, especially in your area, you've got some really good trainers in your area. But here's the thing, you know, we all have to kind of dig in and make the system work the way we want it to work. You know, it's it we, it's it's nice to have a, a, a computer, but we kind of lay out the way we want our mouse to be and our, you know, our keyboard to be. And that's kind of what I, I see the field guide is, you know, we have the computer, but we have to make it kind of work the way we want it to work. So yeah. you know, that's what this is all about is how to make it work, you know, the way I like it, like, you know, my, you know, IntelliCare, it's such a big part of the way I utilize my software. It's how I got out of, you know, the route sheets and all that kind of stuff. And the more that we learn, the more we get out of it, you know, it's, it's literally squeezing the, squeezing the juice out of this, you know. Yeah, IntelliCare was a huge help for my hygienists, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they are a little bit slow for like new things, but then when I offer and show them how it works, they really love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think about how many people, how many hygienists spend their, their mornings reviewing charts to find out who's due to look at x-rays. Well, this is exactly. such an easy thing. It doesn't mean they need them, but it certainly is a good indication that they haven't had bite wings in 12 months or a full series in 60 months. And it just helps you to be able to look at your patients and say, yes. wow, yeah, it's time. You know, it's time for us to take a look. Yeah, exactly. Now I have to do a huge step for getting rid of root sheets because that's what we were using for communication and I don't want it anymore right now in this situation. Yeah. And yeah, we still have charts. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I keep saying that it's going to be a really long time before we're chartless, you know, not mm -hmm. having those physical charts. But I think we can get to the point where we don't need to bring those charts into the operatory. And I think that's a bigger part of where we're going is the cross contamination. And, you know, I, yes. I, you know, I think back to the days when I worked in the office and the doctor would bring that chart out from the operatory and hand it to me. And I think, Ooh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know. and those days you know, are, are in, in the past and we have to figure out new ways to do that. And this is a big part of that. How do we communicate that information from front to back? And, and this is a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, but in the end, it's a good thing that will happen. Yes, no paper, no no chart. You will still have some papers, but no charts. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Well, is there anything else that you can think of? Mm, let me see. So, smart dog. What yes. you are? I know that you are not putting in smart dog any treatment information, like uh, I don't know referrals from other dogs, but. What do you use Smart Doc for? I the only thing I put Smart Doc, I, the only things I put in Smart Doc are things that I am never ever going to be looking at again. That would be mm -hmm. HIPAA forms. That okay. would be care credit application. If that's something mm -hmm. you can even store, um, those kind of documents that really my doctors don't need in order to be smart. You mm -hmm. know, so if my doctor has to see it, I don't want it in smart doc because smart doc is, I always call it like a junk drawer. It's something where you throw something in there and never expect to ever take it out again. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, like the HIPAA forms, we kind of never look back on those things. Yeah. Patient registration form. If you were storing that kind of information, that's something that you're probably never going to look back on unless you had to. Um, there are certain things that um, once we filled those things out, 
they're in the system because we have to store them, but there's not something mm -hmm. that we, we look at on a daily basis. That's kind of my test. If, is it something that I want to see on a daily basis? That goes into imaging. If it's something I, I need to store but never look at again, it goes there. A lot of people store EOBs. I wouldn't, but if you're going to store EOB, that's maybe a good idea in SmartDoc, but I, I still don't think it's a great idea. Um, but, um, you know, uh, consent forms boosts is it put them to the smart dog or to the imaging you said consent forms yes now consent forms i want and again because it makes my doctors smart my doctors and again the practice that i work with when my doctors look at this they want to go uh -huh. okay there's an image next next to number two did we get a consent to do this and they're going to look right here and scroll down and go i don't see a consent form so let me hold off on doing this Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this tooth needs endo. Do we have a consent? Nope, we don't have a consent. Okay, so yeah. So that's the but way that I look at it. Messy. Doesn't it get like a mess, like a lot of information there now to scroll down? No. Well, I mean, this is everything I have in my entire system. And you can for see... For that particular tooth, right? No, for this particular oh, patient. Oh, this for is patient. everything. But the, oh. the problem is, it's still not a lot. I mean, this is how many years? This goes back to 2006? No, 2005. Uh -huh. And this is, you know, I do this every day. But mm -hmm. here's a predetermination. But once I click on the tooth, it's only uh -huh. for the tooth I'm working on. So oh, okay. it gets cleaned up based on what you're uh -huh. working on. So okay. number five, I don't really have any information. Well, there's a predetermination uh -huh. for number five from 2011. But mm -hmm. I think that's cleaner than if I go over to Smart Doc. Yes. And I'm looking yep. through these documents because it depends on who named it and what's mm -hmm. going on here. So. Yeah. And one more question about sure. lab tracking. Yes. How do you use it? Okay. So if you use it, uh, well, I, when I, when I worked in an office, lab tracking wasn't an option. So mm -hmm. the way I always set up lab tracking is, do you see this right here on this patient that says LO? Yes. That means the lab work is out. That's the way okay. I always did lab tracking. But I like lab tracking now. There's my beaker. But the, the important thing about lab tracking is it has to be something where you have a process, just like I'm sure every office has a way where, you know, UPS delivers a box and it hands mm -hmm. it to the people at the front desk. And then they either take that box and they put it on the doctor's desk or there's some place that they put it. And then the doctor will review that, that case to make sure everything's okay and whatever the process is in the office. But somebody has got to be able to connect that lab case to that insert appointment. So somebody's got to mm -hmm. make that process. So you scheduled the insert, but now somebody's mm -hmm. got to go and connect the lab case to that insert appointment. Okay, there. but how it works? Yeah, so that's that's really the process. You check that box, okay. And you apply that lab case to that appointment. You now okay. get the beaker. So, yeah, but it it's this is more of a uh, you know more of a process than it is a tool because the tool works, but somebody's got to be able to actually go in and actually schedule. I mean, literally connect. A lab case to an appointment. So somebody who is creating the lab case, and in our case, it is an uh, assistant. Mm -hmm. He must create it there, right? So then I can close it and apply it when I will get it. Exactly. So, and the problem is the the way lab the lab cases are created is typically after the patient is done. You know that you've checked them out. They're they're gone, All right? And then mm -hmm. the assistant might write up the lab case. And now there's a lab case sitting there and the patient has an appointment. So somebody, whoever that is in the office, has to connect the two things. So they go and they make a new lab case, all right? Oh. And they send it out to Glidewell and it's for a bridge and it's for three, four, five. There's uh -huh. one, all right. And now they hit okay. So now it's uh -huh. sitting out there, but it's not connected. Mm. So what I tell people is whoever is responsible for scheduling insert appointments, should mm -hmm. be looking here for the lab cases. Okay. Yeah, it, because what I'm doing right now, I'm just writing on this uh, appointment and know that the case is here, whatever I get the case. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I would do there. 
I would go here and this, like, when I worked in an office, that's exactly what I would do. I'd change this from LO to LH uh -huh. for lab here. And now I can see that my lab case is back. Yeah. So, but everybody's got to do it their way. But the, you know, the beakers are great, but it just, it's a matter of making sure that you're connecting. And where it gets really difficult is, um, and we talked about this with the, the with doing the treatment plans, say if it's a denture mm -hmm. and the lab case, you know, changes every time. So the lab case the first time is a wax up and the lab uh -huh. case is a try in it. So you're gonna have to make a new lab case for each of those or like imagine this is a denture. I'd have to go in here and detach that case, uh -huh. close it, go back for the next visit for the try-in and then attach uh -huh. that lab case again to the try-in, detach it, yeah. connect it to the wax up. So each office has to kind of figure out how to, to do that. Yeah, what is easier, yeah. I thought. Yeah, and it's more, like I said, it's more of a process and it's more of a who's gonna be responsible for it so that you can follow up on it more than it is the tool of actually utilizing an Eagles off. It's, it's mm -hmm. somebody's gonna be responsible because just like the way we're doing it, the way you do it and the way I did it, if somebody didn't mm -hmm. put that in here, on the mm -hmm. day of the appointment, somebody's going to say, oh, did her case come back? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've all what been guilty of that. What are you doing with EOBs? You said you're not putting them to the smart dog, me either. But what are you doing? I'm just storing them. I have a huge box with EOBs by dates. I have a big scanner on my desk here. And what I do uh -huh. is I just scan them into a folder. So uh -huh. right in Windows, I'd have a folder called uh, May. Actually, it's called 2020 May. And okay. I scan all the EOBs for the day. So inside that folder would have the first, second, third, fourth. It, I would have all those, just like in your like in your box that you have, mm -hmm. probably have them set up by date. Yes. So I just digitized that box because that's exactly what I did when I worked in an office. I had a box under my desk or, you know, and I would scan it, but now I scan those on my, so on my hard drive, I have a folder called 2019, 2018, 2017. Mm -hmm. And when I get 10 years of those, so my, 2001 box or folder in my computer, I can delete. So once it's 10 years old, I can delete that. And you shred the original one? I shred the originals. Yep. And the copy, like a document, like my doctor, she loves to keep like original. Yeah. Like she says, this is a document. So you're saying that the copy, uh, which I will have in my computer will work if I will need it in the future. I hope I will not, but it yeah. will work as a document. Okay. It sure does. So, and the, the I, I'm going to say the Supreme Court, but I mean, I've seen this this document and I can't remember the name of it, but I actually have the statute in, in one of the presentations I do on, on coding, on, on charting. Um, the, the courts have said that a scanned document is equal to the original original okay. all right and remember if you are still a provider so say if it's a, if it's if it's a delta dental eob if you're a provider you can get an, a previous eob you can call them and yeah. say i need a copy of that eob can you send it the problem is if you're no longer a provider that company does not have to provide you with that eob so yeah just because you have access to it because you're a provider if you're a, if you're not a provider at some point you might not have it so scanning it is a great way to have a copy of that document mm -hmm. And even if you have to use it for coordination of benefit, having that scan document, you can always print it and attach it to a claim or attach it to the claim electronically. Yep. And do you name the documents by itself? Like on name, what do you put? You put just the date just on the, the date. document, right? Or the names of the patients? Nope, just the date. Because I just know that if I got an EOB back for Charles for May uh -huh. the 19th, I could just go to my May 19th folder and it would be in there. The same yeah. way it's in your box. Yeah. Same way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, the, the beauty of that is that folder can sit on my on my hard drive until I, I need to get rid of it. Yeah. 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 That's easy. Much more easier. Yeah. That's great. And you can store them in Google Docs or you can store them any place off outside of you know your normal routine because again, EOBs are not something that we typically have to have to draw for mm -hmm. until somebody calls and says, Hey, you know how come my insurance denied this claim? Well, mm -hmm. again, the way that I'm posting my EOBs, there's a line item that says why it was denied. So I don't mm -hmm. even need to pull my EOBs most of the time. 
Okay. And I have last question and I think our, our time will be up. So sometimes the insurances are asking for a proof that the claim was submitted. Yeah. Because they're saying they, that they never got the never claim. Got yep. So wh how you do it? So two things, You're, you have to work with your clearinghouse. If you use EagleSoft's um, e-services for clearinghouse or if you use Renaissance for clearinghouses, yeah, they have a record that that claim was submitted. And that's why, okay. like, if you use uh, Patterson for um, e-claim submission, you get a receipt at the end of the day of all the claims that were submitted. So you get mm -hmm. an e-claim, I forget what the name of it, but like you get a, an acknowledgement. So you can go right to your e-claim service to, uh, center, uh, Renaissance, written remote light, whatever, or um, Patterson and say, I need to show that I submitted this claim and they can mm -hmm. make sure that you have that documentation. Because you okay. just saying, you, you know, even if you showed an Eaglesoft, I submitted that claim, you know, I could print the claim from Eaglesoft, a line item goes into the account, but I could take it and throw it into the shredder. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean the insurance company actually got it. So I always work with a third party to go back and say, here was the actual submission from us to the third party and from the third party to the insurance company. That's the okay. easiest way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank so you. much information. I, you are like my guru. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to help and I'm glad to, to make the connection. I, and when I get back up to the woo, I'll come visit with you. Yes, for sure. I, I hope we will get back to normal one day. It will not be soon, but yeah, I would love to uh, be on your live seminars, not this online thing, and see you in our office. Yeah, it will be a great pleasure. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for spending some time with me today. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, anytime, anytime, for you, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, and we'll talk soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs>